Before we start, I'd like to ask the Julia to open up with a prayer. Okay, please join me in prayer. Beloved Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity to gather together and to hear the words of your heart, to hear the words of your mind, Reverend Holmes from the AM you can join us today and we're sure that he's going to uplift the spirit and inspire everybody with his message about divine sonship so heavenly father it's almost christmas and we really want to focus on the birth of your son our lord jesus such an incredible incredible gift that you gave to the world through him that we can't even put it into words how amazing it is. Our life would be meaningless without that one event that happened 2,000 years ago. And we're so grateful, and we want to dedicate this time to him and to listening about... ...divine sonship, which, of course... He was a divine, he, and he is minds and uh, learn whatever it is that you want us to learn through this message today. I pray all these things. Christ. Amen. Amen. <laughs> thank you, Julia. Oh, thank you, Ed, uh, Reverend Edna, uh, our ACLC uh, New York District Coordinator, is here with us. Welcome, Evangelist Blessing, and uh, from all the way from Nigeria. God bless you, sir. I wonder if... Uh, 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 God bless you, the Blessing. It's uh, uh, from the Florida. Is it, are you here? Yes. Soon, right, soon. And uh, all the uh, friends, uh, and the ministers and the evangelists here today, uh, uh, El El Elaine Rogers and uh, Wilman Sapp, uh, Ban Bana, <coughs> and Cynthia Cox, and Betty. Kendra. And uh, so all the friends of, and uh, also the, uh, maybe some uh, uh, working, associating with the Reverend Holmes is here to support the, this incredible uh, opportunity for receiving the message. And so uh, I would like to uh, put the one song, it's a congregational song, we just wanna lift up our spirit and lift up the spirit together. Uh, so let's sing together. This is uh, our theme song. Of restoration. I pray something. To say that what I and that I 
Thank you for joining. And now I would like to pass this to Jenny uh, from the Florida, and she's going to uh, read uh, this uh, entire session as the uh, uh, master of ceremony. Uh, so Jenny, uh, please take it away. And uh, we ask Edward, that's Reverend Holmes. That's gonna, yeah. He's gonna be the uh, speaker today. Jenny, take it away. Yes. Okay. I just want to greet everyone in the wonderful name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Good in his name. It's a pleasure to be uh, in the midst of uh, everyone today. We may be an uh, in different area, but we are still in the master's business. And we just want to thank God for such a wonderful Sunday. Very nice here in Florida. I don't know about <laughs> in um, New York and where you guys are, but it's beautiful here today. Praise God. And so we're going to, before we go into anything else, we just want to pray. Prayer is the key to everything. So we're going to pray. I'm going to pray and then um, we, then we can go on to the business. Father, we thank you this day, oh God. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor, Lord. We worship you because you are God. And we just want to lift up your holy name, Lord God and I. God, thank you for letting your home in glory. Oh God, you came down, Lord Jesus the form of a man, Lord Jesus, you put on the man. You are 100% man and 100% God. Jesus, no sins you have of your own, but you gave your life, Lord Jesus, so oh God, so that we can have this privilege today, that we can come boldly before your throne of grace and mercy, and we can cry out, Abba, Father. We thank you, Lord, for every person that is here today, Lord God, shining in the sun, Lord God, to lift you up and to glorify the name that is above every other name. Father, we pray, God, today that as we learn and, oh God, and listen and enjoy your word, Lord God, and everything that is to be said and done, we pray, God, that, Lord Jesus, your presence, oh God, may be in the midst of us, Lord. You may tabernacle with us today, Lord God. Increase wisdom, knowledge, understanding as for the speaker, Lord. I pray you anoint your servant afresh. Lord God, speak to him, speak through him as he gave the word, Lord God. We pray, Holy Father, that every heart may be receptive, O oh God, and the Lord Jesus, that we may take what we get today, and Lord Jesus, O oh God, pass it on to someone else, O oh God, that they can know and feel the goodness of you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we glorify your name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So today we are going into our session. Um, it's divine sonship, and I think it's um our um Reverend Edward is going to be the speaker for today and we just want to thank god for this um fellowship that we had um it's the past three weeks we were going into this um um lesson divine sonship and it's um i think it's awesome that um we can be um together um, um can can someone come and take the baby please and so we just want to go in today and enjoy the word from the, the man of God as he brings the word today. We're not going to take up any time because time is already far spent. So we're just going to um, um our Reverend um, Edward to come in and take over now. Bring the word is here. Amen. 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 <laughs> Can you hear me okay? Yes, okay, thank you. Sorry about that here. This boy decided that he wants to be with me. Amen. I hope I can be heard by everybody. Can everyone hear clearly? Okay. Yes, Great. we can hear. Thank yes. you. Good afternoon. I want to give honors and thank God for his grace and mercy. An awesome opportunity to be here this afternoon to share with you on this awesome uh, topic, uh, Divine Sonship. I'd like to acknowledge the presence of my church, my prayer group, acknowledge the presence of Pastor Sandra Dixon from the New Life Christian Ministries out of Georgia and Florida. I want to say thank you to David and Julia Okamoto for the opportunity to have me here. We wanted to share with you, if we can, for just a few minutes um, from John chapter 1, verse 11 through 13. 
in regard to this theme, John chapter 1, verses 11 through 13. And it says here, he, he, Jesus, came into his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of, of God. And in, in, in the vein of uh, divine sonship, I'm going to talk to you this afternoon, if I can, about the process of becoming a son. The yeah. process of becoming a son. We don't really discuss that much as an aspect about becoming, but talk tonight about the process of becoming uh, a son. Yes. Let us let us pray. Most gracious God, we thank you right now for the preaching moment, teaching moment. Let us let anointing fall afresh upon us this afternoon, that all that we say and do may glory to your name. Give us ears to hear, a heart to receive, and a mind to comprehend. In Christ's name we pray, and we say amen and amen, amen and amen. Amen. The process to, to become. The ancient Romans had what they call a placement ceremony, in which a man would publicly place his son who had come of age alongside of him in his business. This Roman mm -hmm. custom was roughly similar to the Jewish bar mitzvah ceremony. In the Hebrew times, when a child was declared to be a man's firstborn son, he was from that point on considered to be equal in all business matters with his father. This was not bestowed in childhood, but when the father considered his son old enough to take over the family affairs or himself to be too old to handle the affairs any longer, he would declare his son to be in charge of his, of his business. Mm. And from that point on, the son was declared by the father, from that point on, all the business that would, the father would normally would do would pass on to the son. Mm. So if the son made a business deal with you, you could consider it a deal as if his father had made it himself. <laughs> Meaning the father gives him this authority that a decision could be made which the father did not have knowledge of or was not bound to. Because the son said something was true, he agreed to a deal, the father was bound by it as well. He gave the authority over uh, to his son. He was now his father's representative. He was authorized to speak on behalf of his father in all things that pertain to his father. Mm. Therefore, it was not unnecessary to hear from the father. The son spoke on behalf of the father. Whatever the son said, the father was bound by it. He gave authority uh, to his son. So something with the father was no longer necessary once the father gave the son authority to operate in his name. Mm. Hebrew concept of a son is that he's a representative of, of the father. And Jesus tells us in his, in his gospel that if you have seen me, you yeah. have seen the Father. If you heard me, you heard the Father. I and the Father am one. He stands now with the authority given mm -hmm. to him by God to be his son. But the Bible says, as many as receive him, to them he gave power to, to become. We don't automatically mm -hmm. grow up. We don't automatically establish ourselves mm -hmm. as sonship. We have to grow into that process, mature into that, into that role. Uh, God will place mature Christians by his side one day as the manifestation of the sons of God. We are placed as mature Christians, mature sons, as we have been processed by trial and tribulation and having grown in character to full maturity. It is a sad thing in many churches. We give people titles without having them gone through the fire, without having crucified the flesh, without having them having them matured and get the worldliness off of them. We wonder why they fail in their assignments in the church, but we have not given them time to mature and, and grow into the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Mm. Romans 8:19. 
He speaks of the manifestation of the sons of God, which is our adoption as mature, mature son. The mm -hmm. word mature here is important. He said that he gave us power to become sons of God. We don't automatically establish it. We become mature believers and knowing that we have a, the authority by God to operate on behalf of Jesus Christ or in conjunction with Jesus Christ, as he says, as being adopted into the family of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Knowing that our human spirit is reborn and is fully redeemed and fully righteous and is presently a son of God gives us great joy and full assurance mm -hmm. and security in our walk with God. The Holy Spirit himself bear witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Okay. Our born again spirit is a son of God, is a son of God now. But yet we still have to yet mature in mm -hmm. that in that process, process mm -hmm. of becoming. Mm -hmm. We become uh, sons of God through sanctification, mm -hmm. through fasting, prayer, prayer mm -hmm. Bible study, uh, submission, being under uh, legitimate church leaders to instruct us and to guide us in the things of God. They call it discipleship. We need inner healing. We need deliverance. Mm -hmm. We need to live in a Christian community. We have to develop self-control. Uh, have the prayer of consecration and self-denial and taking up our cross and following after, after Jesus. Mm -hmm. At the time, we don't really want to, to discuss this crucifixion, the, the crucifying of the flesh or mm -hmm. sanctification or self-denial as Christians. We want to hop in get born again on on Sunday and Monday morning be bishop on Monday. There's a process of growth we have to go through. Mm -hmm. And many times as Christians, we don't want to go through that process of growing, being denying self, crucifying the flesh, turning away with worldly lust. And we can't do all of this worldliness and yet be, be declared sons of God. We stand representatives of the most high, most, most, most high God. Mm -hmm. So if we want to follow to know Christ, to become the sons of God. We have to understand and, and, and let the Lord uh, lead us and guide us and follow him with all our heart. And we will, he will provide us the ability to be renewed in the power of God daily. Not just when we feel like it, we'll have an unction. There's a daily commitment to God to grow and live uh, thereby. Once we get born again, the human spirit has no, no sin nature. The human spirit of the Christian believer received this sinless nature at the time that the human spirit was regenerated at the new birth. You know, so he's being born again, new creation in Christ Jesus. All things are, are passed away. He begins to make all things new, all things are new in our lives through, through Christ Jesus. And therefore, we're no longer under the law. Law is given to forbid us from doing certain behaviors. If we are not under the law, it means that all things are, are permitted. God gives us a new life, and we have our, our mind is different, our heart is different, our soul is different, our direction is different. We're walking and talking and seeking the things that are, that are of God. The soul of a Christian believer is in the process of being saved. And it's not fully, not yet fully a partaker of the divine nature. We don't, I said, we don't grow up, we don't get saved on, on Sunday, and we're fully grown on Monday. We, and we open the door for us to walk into, into our growth, to walk into our, our maturity as believers. And thank God for the, for the fivefold ministry, the pastors, the teachers, the preachers, the prophets, the evangelists, to, to instruct us how to perfect us as as saints of God, that we might eventually be able to be called the sons, sons of God. Mm -hmm. The soul of a born again, born again Christian has a sin nature. The soul and body of a Christian is subject to the commands that are written in the New Testament. Uh, the Bible contains many commands in both the Old and New Testament. But sadly, Many Christians don't know how to properly apply biblical law. 
you don't know how to rightly live according to the word of God. And many times we mess up our walk and we, we fail, and we fall, we get we become accused and laughed at and ridiculed and scorned. But we thought we were doing things right. We did it according to a heritage or culture, but not in alignment to the word of God. In the church, someone said last week, but the church seemed to be in trouble because we have not yielded ourselves to God for his complete unquestioned control over our lives. We want to have one foot in the world, one foot in the church, live caught, we want to be carnal. And carnality it leads us into death. So now we're dealing with a church united, a, a church culture that is carnal and not sold uh, as slaves to, to, uh, to Christ and to God. The sin nature of the flesh resides in the soul. The soul is being saved. The inward man, soul, is being renewed day by day until Christ be formed in it. And again, that's a daily process, daily crucifying the flesh, denying fleshly lust, turning our face towards God, seeking his face, turn from our wicked ways, then we will hear. Then we will hear. Then God will speak to our hearts. And we'll be able to mature into the things that are, are of God. As a Christian, unfortunately, this is the way life is. We have two natures. Christ has two natures. He has a divine nature and a human nature. Both are sinless. But the Christian has two natures. One is sinless and one is sinful. The Ruach, the God breathing to our, to our nostrils, the, the essence of God doesn't sin. It's the soul of man, the nature of man, which is, is prone to sin. And therefore, God has to deal with the soul of, our, of, 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 of us to get in alignment to the spirit of God that dwelleth within inside of us. So the sin for human nature is in the soul of each Christian believer. It's being transformed to the image of a sinless God through the process of sanctification. As we learn how to deny ourselves, pick up our cross daily, God does a mighty work in our yeah. hearts. For it is God who is at work in us, mm -hmm. both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Come to Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. And by grace, we will grow up in all aspects into him who is the head, even Christ. It is the grace of God, looks beyond our faults, sees our needs. Deals with us constantly to get okay. right, to stay right, to walk right, to live right, to think right, to act right, to be all that God has enabled us to be through freeing us from the law of sin and death. Yes, Lord. Each Christian can say that his spirit is, is perfect, his soul is being perfected, his body will be, per will be perfect at the resurrection of the righteous dead. We're in the process of becoming new creation, day by day, climbing up mm. Jacob's ladder. Every round goes mm. higher and higher as we strive mm. to be all of what God has purpose for us, for us to be. But the main mm. concept of this is a laying down of the self-life. Mm. My pastor said, the flesh can't operate. Crucify the flesh, kill the flesh, get rid of, get rid of self. And God is calling us in this last, someone said we're in the last days, the last hours, the last minutes, the last seconds, and Christ can come at any time. But God is calling upon us as his saints to a deeper walk of consecration obtained by laying down one's own life. True discipleship and overcoming life come from self-denial. And self-denial is crucial and central to Jesus' teaching, teaching on discipleship. And we refer to all born again believers as disciples. But Jesus said, Whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Mm -hmm. We want to carry the title of disciple as we get born again. Mm -hmm. And we can't carry the cross. The, title of disciple without having crucified the flesh and the lust uh, with it. And that's what I think the church is suffering from right now 
we have a whole lot of people in, in position and yet you're not yet been crucified and not yet denying the flesh aren't taking up the cross and truly following Jesus we have a carnal Christian community that we're dealing with and there's no power being emanated from carnality only from the truth a heart that's been truly saturated with the love of God and the Holy Ghost as it was on the day of Pentecost are all Christians disciples do all carry their cross? Do all realize that life comes from death and that victory comes as a result of the work of the cross in our lives? Abolition to denials of self and carrying the cross appear in all four gospels as a prerequisite to discipleship. But we, 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 we do not want to deny us deny ourselves to follow the cause of Christ. And it's evident that and what we're looking at nowadays in our communities, in our countries, that we have the church as a whole is not protesting, not demonstrating, not carrying a cross against the righteousness that we see all over our land. We've become quiet, almost like, almost like mutes, if you will, when we have God has given us power to go forth and to preach and teach wherever we are. I'm reminded on the day of Pentecost when Paul came to Jerusalem and started the church. I said they went everywhere preaching. They went everywhere preaching, everywhere preaching, and we go nowhere teaching in 21st century America. Mm. When we ought to be as disciples, as children of God, sons of God, those the the sonship, divine sonship carrying the gospel wherever the need arises. We fail because Jesus says, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross yeah. daily yeah. and follow me. Yeah. Jesus says, if any man serve me, him will my father honor. The process of becoming begins with coming after. It, become, it begins with coming after Jesus, following Jesus, and it ends with being honored by the Father. The sincere believers are following Jesus, but do not take the step of denying self and taking up the cross daily. I emphasize that again. We want to follow Christ, but not take up the cross. And we can't follow Christ without taking up the cross. If they may be able to maybe then first deny himself, pick up his cross and follow after, after me. Without this step of self-denial, it is impossible to serve Jesus in the proper spiritual manner. Without this step, it is impossible to have the full measure of the statue of Christ. Without this step of self-denial, we're not going to have the power necessary to transform this this, someone said, this confused and troubled world. I believe it's troubled and confused because we as a, as a Christian, body of believers, who want to claim divine sonship, have not taken up the cross, have not crucified the flesh, and we're not truly following after, after Christ. That's the service that these believers render is tainted with false motives, is not acceptable to Jesus, and will not result in their being honored by the Father. By not taking up the cross daily, our service to God come out of an unregenerate, unregenerated self-life. Anything done by the old nature is an abomination unto God. The only service that the old nature can muster is legalistic, fleshly manifestation of, of, of nothingness, really, because it has no, no, no power to it, no life to it at all. Mm -hmm. The scriptures the gospel and let the church deal particularly with self denial taking up our cross mm -hmm. and following after after Jesus. Let me hang my, my hat on this note give time today. So the acquiring we don't want to deny self. 
we want to nurture and perfect the self. We tear down before he can build us up. The old self must die first. I believe. I believe we're in the season now where if we say that Christ is truly on his way back. We as a church got some work to do to be, to, to be the embodiment of the divine sonship. We have work that needs to be done. Amen. I, I believe, and, I, and, my, and my prayer is not only just my, myself as being a pastor in the church, that the old self must die. Mm -hmm. It must die die first. I must crucify the flesh daily that the power of God might live within us. There must be a death if there is to be a resurrection. Unless a seed dies, it can't bring forth, we can't bring forth fruit. Unless we die to self, we can't bring forth righteousness that is fit for the kingdom of God and to save dying souls here on earth. I declare, I decree, I believe in my whole heart. We must walk through the valley before we can climb on the mountain. We must die before new life can be given. Mm -hmm. That is challenge, it's a challenge now. Not to sit back as the as with divine, of course, a divine sonship. We see a government in despair, and there's no one protesting from the church on the Capitol steps. How can we sit back as the people of God? And we see a government being torn down. And it says that in God we trust. And anything mm -hmm. but trust in God is going on mm -hmm. in the high of our government. And we have mm -hmm. not yet as a church protested, called a prayer meeting in the public, raised raise a fuss at the <coughs> We did that. Complicit, weak, impotent. Because we are living by our flesh and not by the power of the Almighty God. Mm -hmm. The church, I believe, is called upon in this day and age. Mm -hmm. To us to be divine, experience divine sonship, it has to be prayer and repentance. Call upon God for mercy and for grace to fix us and to heal us and to save us from our wicked ways. And then yeah. we will hear from heaven. And our church has the power to live. I'm always disturbed when I see that the of the world coming to an end and Christ is soon to come because he's coming back because we have not yet as a believers. All the years we've been here, labored and fought to hold up the blessing of Jesus Christ that the world might see that he lives because he lives within within our hearts. Yes, I believe divine sonship is available. I believe in divine sonship. But let, let a perfect work begin in me. Lord, have mercy on me. Fix me. Save me. Deliver me. Reconstruct my mind, my soul, my heart. I might be about my father's business. I believe then that our world, we can stop the madness, bring healing to our nation. I'm reminded, and I believe with all my heart, when Paul came to Jerusalem and scattered the church in Jerusalem, they were everywhere preaching. question is, where have we been lately? Where the trouble has been, have we gone? anywhere as the as sons of God, preaching, teaching, and telling the dying world, which is the sin is death, but God's gift to life through Christ Jesus. I pray for us that we will get ourselves in alignment with God as his sons and daughters to do a work and help save this mean and unruly nation and the mean and unruly world. And to God be the glory for what he has done for us. Thank you for your time today. May God bless you. Amen, amen, amen. What a word. What a word today. Amen. 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 God, thanks for these words. Man of God, explain it down, break it down so powerful. Praise God about the divine sonship. Thank God for your life, man of God. This is powerful. Yes. Praise be his holy name. Divine sonship. I mean, one of the principles of uh, and, and of the most basic things that the gospel talks about divine sonship is 
it talks about um, how we petition, how we worship. He goes into some powerful thing. He's talking about how the church today function as as sonship of God. You know, some of us come in today and tomorrow we want to be a bishop. We want to be apostles. And it is so true. It is so true. Today we we'll sit back and then that's why we see a lot of church falling. A lot of ministers throwing in the towel now. I love them retiring, all because um, they don't wait on God timing. As one brother was saying, some sent, some was sent, and some went. And when we look back and we see the ones them that um, they sent, they remain still like the man of God, Bishop Edward, still in his age, still standing for the word of God. And those that went, where are they? They leave a bitter taste in the, in, in, in the mouth of sinners. They leave a bitter taste in the mouth of some brethren. And, and that is not good sonship. That tear down the churches today. Mm. Oh, blessed be his holy name. So we, we, as, we as followers of God and believers, when we believe, we'll be adapting to his into the nature of God. So mm -hmm. we know that we're supposed to run with the word of truth. Amen. The truth. Sometimes it, it may cost us a lot, but we have to stand firm for the truth and let the, the, the world know that the gospel must be preached. The man of God go back to talk about what are we doing? Where is our focus? He talks about what takes place at, 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 um, at the house there, Parliament. What are we doing? As Christians, we are sitting down. We're not smelling the coffee yet. Oh my God. It is powerful. Mm -hmm. It is powerful. Mm -hmm. And um, if we had a little time, that's, you can jump in. Um, anyone want to jump in and just refresh what the man of God say today? It is powerful. We have um, we have evangelist blessing. Can you hear me? Yes, God bless you. Yeah, bless God the bless Lord. You. Yes, you have anything to say? The man of God break it down so powerful. Mm. All I just want to say is thank God. I thank God for the man of God who spoke and. Yes. I thank God for the grace of God upon his life. He spoke directly, he spoke according to the will of God. Amen. And so I thank God and I pray for him more grace, more oil, fresh, fresh fire upon Amen. his life in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise yes. God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. We have, we have um any any um we have any man of God there. I can't see one who is on the forum. It's just a few person I can see, but you're there and you want to show in something and you know give you give give a thought on what you learned today, what you take away today from what the man of God brings. Good afternoon. My name is Wilhelmina Sapp, and I'm from the prayer line of Reverend Holmes. I thank Reverend Holmes for that powerful message that will take me through the week. And I thank you guys for inviting us to your prayer line. I thank you. I thank you for all those that are here. I pray that God bless all of you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, amen. Anyone else want to say anything about the uh, Mm. Think what they take away. We have a, we have Cynthia Cox. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. It's your first time on our forum. Yes, it's my first time. I'm excited. Oh. Amen. <laughs> amen. Right. Welcome. I, just... <laughs> I, I know you God. must take something because while the word was going, you were just smiling. So I know <laughs> you take home a lot today. So share with us. Yeah. You know, I just want to say I've been knowing Reverend for about 11 years. He is awesome. I tell you, the message was so great today. And, and you know, one thing about what we hear here, um, you know, you have to take it 
and be real. You got to be real in your soul. You can't have a, you know, it's just like make believe I'm talking to God. He said, we, we do on Sunday and then we go out on Monday with something else. But we got to be, it's got to be a spiritual thing all the way across because when people see you, they can tell when you got the Holy Spirit. You ain't got to tell anybody anything because it works. It just, it just says it all is, I mean, it just said it for itself. But I, I so appreciate the work. I appreciate him. You know, because his birthday was Monday, so I'm still smiling on his birthday. So it is, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, I, I call it a whole month of, you know, that he celebrated his birthday, but it was Monday the 13th. But, you know, I'm just so thankful for him and all that he does. And he really, it pours his heart out. He does a, a great job, and I appreciate this work today. So God is good. Thank you so re much, Reverend Edward Charles mm -hmm. Holmes. And thank you guys for joining us. So maybe we'll do this again. God bless you. Yeah. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. We have um, uh, our brother David and his wife, beautiful wife, woman of God, said Juliet. <laughs> Praise be his holy Thank name. You. Thank you very I much. I know you're driving because I can see you driving. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We are not the driving, but we are stopping. Oh, and, uh, okay. We, yeah, we are so grateful for the message we received today. And especially that he mentioned about the uh, fruitful a matureness, mm -hmm. mature, maturity. maturity of our, our faith. Uh, it is really true that every day is uh, our battle uh, to really kill ourselves. I mean, it's not kill the literally, but uh, mm -hmm. our, you know, kind of desire or physical desire. We remember that even Lord Jesus, he went to the wilderness for 40 days, came to him mm -hmm. and tempted him. But the, all the temptations that Satan gave to him. So that's it uh, for free. Actually, we need to earn it. And we need to really continue to work on ourselves and the, really the... Uh, that Jesus said that the uh, kingdom of heaven is within you. So that Amen. means that unless the, our heart, our heart matures, our mm -hmm. love matures, mm -hmm. that there's no kingdom heaven. So Amen. we are so grateful for the, this message that, that this is all come to our own, how we can be the divine sons and daughters of God. Thank you very much. And uh, we have uh, some uh, special uh, guest here that uh, Reverend Edna, he's, uh, he has been uh, uh, here as, as always commentator and also the church. Uh, I'd like to hear something from the, uh, these two, if, if they can give us some of your, their comments. Amen. Yes. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm very uh, grateful and thankful to, uh, to Reverend Edward. I think he touched on some very fundamental issues, you know, about uh, the message of Christianity. I think I, I appreciated his shining light on the topic of sanctification. That is to say, the, the reality that, you know, Rebirth is not an instantaneous event, but really requires us to grow uh, as Christians, really take responsibility for our growth as well Amen. over a period of time. I think, uh, you know, he, he touched base on something that's, that, that really we as Christians need to give attention to. Uh, in fact, uh, I recall the Apostle Paul, you know, I mean, after all, the Apostle Paul, a man called by God who received Jesus in the spirit, who was saved by the Lord himself, and yet at the same time, fully recognized the power of sin in the flesh, you know, yeah. he recognized that contradiction within himself, you know, seeing two laws in operation in his life. So the idea of bringing the flesh into submission, I think is, the, is really the ultimate desire of God 
for humanity. And I say that because when I read scripture, and I think sometimes uh, there is a tendency on our part as Christians to assume that the flesh in and of itself is, is evil or bad, when in fact, originally speaking, God created it to be good, to be in, in, in subjection to the spirit and called good. Of course, we understand that because of the fall, that contradiction has come to be and the power of sin continues to operate in our, in our uh, flesh very, very strongly, even in the best of Christians. Uh, sometimes, you know, we're taken down because of that issue. And so it remains an issue, I think, and in, uh, in a kind of homework for Christianity to resolve. Amen. You know, because if we're ever to, 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 to bring this world back to God, you know, we, we declare uh, the, the, the devil, in a sense, the, 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 the ruler of this world, but he was never to be the ruler of this world. We were to be the ruler of this world. Right. We were to be lords of this world. So that's, that's the homework of Christianity. That's the homework of the gospel, to bring that relationship between the spirit and the flesh in proper order mm. so that indeed we can completely remove the power of Satan in our flesh as the Lord Jesus has removed it in our spirit. That, that's my sharing. Amen. Thank you, thank you Reverend Edward. Thank you, Reverend I, where is your church? Uh, it's in Haverstraw. Oh, okay. Haverstraw is in uh, Florida? In no, New York. Oh, in New York. York. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, New York. I've no, no, in New York. David, David Jr. That Amy <laughs> Tyson. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. that's an Albert Straw. <laughs> Sis, Sister I know Jenny, that place. The way Sister Jenny was speaking, I'm thinking she's the one who just about brought everybody in today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Thank you. Know. Thank you very much, uh, Reverend. Thank, you, Thank you for Thank shining you. light, though, yeah. on that. Amen point of sanctification. Yes, right. yes. and that was powerful because he go into um, the, the, the different stages of um, sonship. And um, it's, it's beginning from the infant to the newborn again, and believers. And the, the more you grow in Christ, you know, and, and sometimes uh, um, you have Christians and I, once I was in a, in a, in a church that, um, and uh, the pastor was talking about, um, you know, they are babies. And if you if you have been saved for a certain amount of year, you're not a baby anymore, because a baby doesn't stay down and in, in in bed for no long. By the time six months, not even six months, three months, they wanted to get off. You can they roll in and crawl in. So once you become a child of God, once you become a believer. You're no more, that's why the Bible talks about the, the, the not drinking that milk, but since you constantly grow from stage to stage, from milk, then you start eat purified food, and then you grow, then you start eat from the pot. For six months, baby, eating from the pot. Yeah, they want everything. They don't want the bottle anymore. They want your food that you eat. And in a few more months, then you see they start running to the fridge and to the cupboard like they see everybody does. <laughs> yeah, so that's how we grow from grace to grace. You know, you don't stay one place. Some brethren clean, they, they be in church for 25 years, and yet still they can't stand and give a testimony. No, you're not growing, you know, and that's not what God called us for. You know, each and every one of us are evangel evangelists, we're a missionary for God. Because look at the the um the, the tree. Um, magic. When they found Jesus, when the angels speak to them and tell them that their son is gone, they they went and they saw him for themselves. But look what they did. They didn't keep it to themselves. They went out, and even though people, some people didn't believe them, but yet still they spread the news. And not only did they spread the news, they worship him. They went back to the glorify him. So we doesn't we're not supposed to sit down and just 
say, oh, I'm okay. No, it doesn't work that way. We need to go out. We need to let everyone know who we serve and how precious he is to us. Not sitting down one stage, still having mommy feeding you from the bottle. Some people just want the pastor, or the bishop and, and the reverend to just feed them, feed them. They go home and they, they eat in the church and then they go home and they and then they come back and they're dependent on them. They're not taking the Bible. They don't worship, you know, and they disturb the, the man of God at home and enjoying the family. They still, oh, I'm in ache, I'm in pain. Grow from grace to grace. Grow, don't sit there. Praise be his holy name. Um, is, is there um, Reverend Gabriel online there? Or anyone else? I know we used to have some powerful man of God online because I can't see um, Pastor David who is on so that I could call them you know, by name. Is Reverend Gabriel on? We also do have uh, Reverend Galvan here with us from yeah, the Bronx. Reverend Galvan, can you say something? I know you fed from it today. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you. Amen. Uh, God bless you, God brother. Some face. In the Lord. Uh, this is, uh, you know, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Amen. This is uh, Christmas week and uh, Christmas season. And uh, when I listened to Brother Edwards, thank you, Brother Edwards. That was wonderful. Pastor, you did, preach, you did some preaching and teaching today. Amen. Thank you very Amen. much, Brother. <laughs> Especially, I, I'm reminded about the gift. You know, everybody's given gifts this week. But the real gift you gave today. And I think the gift is that we know that Jesus, Jesus is the Son of God. And, you know, we want to see God, we look to Jesus. And I felt very much that when you took Matthew 16, 24, that's one of my favorite quotes. You talked that and Jesus said to his disciples to, you know, if you you must deny, you must deny yourself. Take up the mm -hmm. cross. The cross yeah. and, and to deny yourself. It, it takes a hundred percent, a hundred and ten percent effort. And I think today you you gave that message today, the the, the desire. See, it's it, it, going back to the, uh, the Garden of Eden. There was a sin of desire. The mistake here, they they got they got uh, they they lost on desire. We have to today renew our desire. Born again means we must uh, ourselves purify our desires and uh, come back to the Father. And I think Jesus was the only one that I know on earth that he never had a selfish bone in his body. Mm -hmm. and, and Jesus always, always, he's a, a selfless person, not selfish, selfless. Mm -hmm. And this is what means to deny yourself. And so we must do that, especially reminding this week, glory to God. And I think also take up the cross. People have to know what is the cross? Because they think the physical cross, is he talking about dying on that cross? No. How do you deny? You, you deny yourself means you're going to have to really come out of yourself, give from yourself, and you have to really sacrifice. You have to, you, and when you love somebody, that means you, you deny your own ego. You go, mm -hmm. you go against your own self. Oh, I'm worried about me, myself, and I. The, the, this this kind of thing that we have in this country right now in the world is this uh, so this fear that we somehow or other I'm I'm going to lose if I give, but it don't, people don't know mm. that they will live when they die. And so I thank you very much for that message, and then also being able to do to follow him. Really, the only way you can know and name your war, you've got to name your battle. There's many Christians today who are naming their battles, but God didn't name the battle. See, if you, you can go after the wrong battle and lose the war. And what it is now is we have to understand it's a spiritual warfare. It is not a physical war. Thank you very much for clarifying that today. I want to uh, say God bless you and Merry Christmas to you, Brother Edward. You, you, you hit it right on the head. Thank amen, you very much. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. brother. Thank you very much. Yeah, amen. 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 Powerful, Hallelujah. powerful. Yeah. We have anyone at the um But I wanted to add something I didn't, and I wanted to forget, is about, especially the blessing that we need to do, is when you, he talked about the, the uh, taking up the cross, in, in, in marriage blessing, in marriage is when you really, really do 
die unto yourself. And we have to learn that. We have to go back and sanctify our marriages. And we have to do is invite the blessing upon of all of our marriages. And he mentioned the 40 days where Jesus was tempted. We have a ceremony process of purification of 40 days and the three days as Jesus himself was prayed for three, th three hours. And we have to do as ourselves is we understand how to sanctify being rebirth into our marriages. So I want to thank you, uh, Brother Edwards, for hitting it right on the head during this time. We have to look how we can sanctify our families with the uh, husband and wife and bless our couple so that there can be a purification of the true love of all of humanity. Amen. Thank you very much. Amen. 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 Um, um, is Reverend Gabriel online also? Yes, he's online. Uh, Reverend Gabriel, bless his holy name. You have what yeah. you take away today? It's a fantastic day. Amen. No, I've been ministering throughout since yesterday, Friday, yesterday, today. So you can see my voice is my voice is really gone, but it has been a very good teaching. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, Putting the last the last teaching for the year 2021 on this platform. So I say a big thank you to Reverend Holmes and to everybody who has made our restoration what it is. Thank you. 2022, God will sustain us. We will see the beginning and the end in Jesus' name. God bless you. Amen, amen. Um, we have any other reverend or bishop or pastor in line that want to say something before? No one else? Anyone else have any more takeaway before we go into prayer? I have um, a little thing that I uh, research about sonship, the characteristic of sonship. And um, I was going through it. It says, son, sons have an identity. Every son of an identity. Son of a name given by their father. Right. Son of an inheritance. Son see their father because they learn and imitate their father. Mm -hmm. The son does not reason. They execute what they see their father do. Mm -hmm. And that is so true. If you notice that the son, whenever he gets close with his father, he always wants to be like his father. Some of them, they watch what the father do and they pattern it. Mm -hmm. A son know that the, a son know whose he is. He know that he is the son of a, a certain person. He know who he is. And you can't tell him that that is not your father. He know who he is. Mm -hmm. A son affirm their father. Son walk in humility. A son just are the sons. And in Romans 8 and 15 talks about the sons also. And 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 in um John 3 16 said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Praise be his holy name. So is, a son is son is someone special. And, and when we look back and see, oh God, love us so much as his sons and his daughter. He loves us so much that he have his only son. And he sent him down to die for us that we can gain, that we can come together as a family and talk of the goodness of his love and his mercy. One writer said, how can I describe a God that is indescribable and a love that is so unexplainable? He says, lost for word. So today we are, we are really, really blessed knowing that we are adapted in something that is so powerful. And the man of God talk about the inner spirit, the Holy Spirit of God. We have the Holy Spirit inside of us. 
we are fed through that spirit because it helps us to grow. It teaches us, it leads us, it guides us, it protects us. Praise be his holy name. He watches, it watches over us. When we, so when we adapt in this, when we become giant here with God, we don't have to have fear in us. We don't have to be slaves to, to sin because we are the son and daughters of the most high God. Praise be his holy name. We're going to ask um, Reverend Garvin um, if you could, um, if you have anything else or anyone have anything else to say today, then we'll just ask Reverend Garvin to close us in prayer. If we have Brother Day, um, David online, if you have anything else to say, and you know, we just close up. Or yes, any, uh, um, I just want to say thank you, everybody. This is the last one uh, for this year, our restoration. And we are, are going to be ready in the first Sunday, uh, next Sunday, and uh, in the January 2nd, I think. Uh, we, we're we're going to welcome the uh, Reverend Gabriel, uh, just coming back from the Nigeria. Amen. And so uh, thank you, everybody, and a happy new year. Amen. Lord, especially Amen. Merry Amen. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Christmas. Happy Kwanzaa. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy Kwanzaa. Yeah. And Happy Amen. New Year. So Happy. we're just going to ask some Reverend Gavin, um, Gavin to close off us in prayer. Yes. Let us pray, brothers and sisters. Let us pray. I offer this prayer, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus. We pray together, men and women of God, and we pray as a Bishop Edwards, he shared a beautiful, beautiful message today in your name. Amen. It was the message that we really, we really need to do mm -hmm. is to uh, take up uh, the cross. We need to really, uh, we need to love. We need to ourselves understand that we have to, that cross of making true love uh, the, our first, our first and, and foremost uh, value that we have. And we pray also that we can follow you, follow your son. We pray, Heavenly Father, as uh, Pastor Edward said, we, you, you're coming back. And we know that you're coming back. And it's, uh, the time is now. We need to ourselves ready ourselves in our marriages and in our families and our husbands and wives and in our leadership and our children. We pray that uh, right now that we can truly be grateful to you, grateful to you. And not deny ourselves just for the sake of ourselves, just being uh, looking to punish ourselves, but all, offering everything to you. Like our Isaac, like uh, Abraham was uh, asked to do, Heavenly Father, to offer his, his first, his own his son. We want to ourselves be able to offer what we cherish, what we hold on to. And most of all, we hold on to ourselves, our own pride. We want to really sacrifice those kind of things that bring us pleasure and make make us comfortable we pray during this time with covid and this time right now this country the world is uh, omicron we pray that we can be if this is the time that we have to be born again we have to yes, really Lord. we have to resurrect our our our, yes. our, our, our our mind our soul and our body mm -hmm. and we pray for the purification of the world now that uh mm -hmm. now in all things of the devil we pray mm -hmm. that we can really cling on to you <coughs> father Cling on to your son now and cherish the word. Really take the word to heart and ourselves. For the make the word a living word. And we pray that this here hour of restoration has been uh, going for 2020, 2021 can really uh, claim a victory for you because you have really de 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 destined already that this would be uh, not the final hour, but it would be our victory for you that we offered up in 2021 with the Okamoto family. We pray the blessing be, be theirs and that we can continue in 2022, come together again and bring more uh, leadership who can really become more in love with your word. And we want to truly, Father, during this time, be grateful to for all parents who have really tried their best and not feel defeated, but that we can really, through our uh, even our mistakes, that we can learn to be better and to uh, ourselves 
be ye perfect as the Heavenly Father is perfect. We pray that during this time, all of us can offer our hearts to you and we can really claim the blessing. And we want to thankful for uh, Dr. and um, um, uh, Huck Jahan Moon, who has also really inspired us by her love and sacrifice, dedication as a true mother and also as a true parents. We want to really like, be grateful and be happy and be uh, ourselves called and all of us chosen and that we can be appointed to go out and be a witness to the world. So we offer you this together, brothers and sisters, men and women of God, we pray thanking you. In Jesus' name, we pray together. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank God. And now may the saving grace of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ, love of God the Father, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, rest, remain, and abide with us all now and forevermore. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. We thank everyone today. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hope to see you all next week. Praise His holy name on a new year. Amen. 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 Happy New Year. Okay. Happy Christmas. Merry Christmas and Happy, Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. 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 And Happy New Year. New Year when it comes. <laughs> amen, amen. Bye, everyone. Happy New Year already, Abel. Yeah. I'm celebrating it already. Reverend Gabriel, we're coming to New to Nigeria to enjoy it with you. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> God. Bye, everyone. So long. <laughs>